In the previous lecture, we looked at uh, control sources. Now, so far we have looked at two terminal elements and also control sources. Uh, and what we have done is to describe the relationship between the voltage and current of these elements. In this lecture, what we will look at is the power and energy in these elements. Okay. Now, before I get started, are there any questions regarding the previous lecture or any of the previous four lectures? Okay, I think now you are able to see the journal as well as the webcam video. Is that correct? If uh, someone is not able to see that, please uh, send a message in the chat window. Okay, I think now you are able to see me. So, if there are any questions regarding the topics we covered in the previous classes, Please ask questions. You can type into the chat window. continue with the lecture. Now, uh, we looked at a number of uh, elements, the independent sources, voltage and current source, and also the resistor, capacitor, and inductor. Okay? And each of these is defined by some relationship between the voltage across the element and the current through the element. Okay? And you know what these relations are. In this case, I have shown all the uh, elements with this passive sign convention. Okay? That is, if uh, V is defined positive on top and uh, negative on the bottom, I goes into the upper terminal, the terminal on top. Okay. Now, uh, this product VI, that is the product of the voltage across the device and the current through the device has some significance and that is nothing but the power that is going into the device. Okay. So, with this sign convention, with the passive sign convention, V times I is the power that is going into the device. Okay. Now this either can be constant or changing with time depending on V and I. Okay. If uh, uh, if uh, V and I, V or I is time varying, it's possible that this uh, power is time varying, and in that case, it is known as instantaneous power. Okay. So this is what the uh, instantaneous power is and this uh, if it is positive the power is going into the device and if it is negative power is drawn from the device. Okay. On the other hand if it is negative, that is P of T is less than 0, power drawn from the 
device. Okay. So this is how uh, the power is defined and it's extremely important to follow the passive sign conventions that is the appropriate signs of the voltage and current across the elements. Okay. Now what we will do is we will look at uh, each of these elements and see what the power is. Okay, because we know that the element enforces certain relationship between the voltage and current. That means certain things for power and we will look at that shortly. Okay. Oh, let's take a resistor. We have some V and some I. And we know that V equals I times R, where R is the resistance value. Okay. Now the power P of T is V times I. Now in general it can be dependent on time. Now the resistor doesn't care if V and I are changing with time. At each instant of time, the voltage is proportional to the current at that instant of time and the proportionality constant is the resistance R. Okay. So if I substitute uh, V equals IR from here, I will get I square times R. Alternatively, if I substitute I equals V divided by R, I will get V square divided by R. Okay. So now, uh, given this uh, type of relationship, please tell me what is special about this. Okay, we have V square by R or I square by R. So what does it signify? Okay, there are a number of answers, but I think the, uh, probably the question was a little vague. My question is, please concentrate on the fact that we have I squared, that is square of some quantity or V squared. So what does that signify? So has somebody answered? V square and I square in this expression imply that T is always positive. Okay, or it could be zero, but it's uh, never negative. Okay. So the, this means that a resistor always absorbs power. Okay. You can never get power out of a resistor. The resistor always absorbs power. And typically we also say instead of absorbs, dissipates. So in practice, if you connect some voltage across a resistor, some current will flow and the resistor absorbs the power of V square by R and it will go on heating up. Okay. So that's what usually happens in, that's what happens in practice. Okay. The point is that the uh, power is always positive, which means that the resistor absorbs power. Okay. So I think this must, uh, this is uh, pretty clear. 
Now, uh, let me take some other elements. Let me take a voltage source. Okay. That is, I have V equals V naught. That is, the voltage of the voltage source is this quantity V naught. And I have some current through the voltage source. Now, I would like answers from the participants. What do you think this does? Will it absorb power or uh, uh, what is the condition? Or can we say anything about it at all? Can we make any statements about what the power is going to be in a voltage source? Okay, I see a number of answers that uh, some of you say it absorbs power and some of you say it uh, provides power or it delivers power and so on. Okay, now the fact is that you cannot tell just by looking at this. It can do either. See, the point is P equals V times I. Now let's assume that the way I have defined it, V naught is positive. Okay, so let's say V naught happens to be 5 volts. Okay. Now, the property of the voltage source is that the current can be anything. It constrains the voltage across it to be V0, but the current can be anything. Now, if the current is positive, a positive current is flowing in the direction shown, P is V0 times I, and I already said V0 is positive, and that will be more than 0. Okay? In this case, it absorbs or it dissipates power. Okay? And if I is less than zero, that is, a current is flowing out of the positive terminal, then I is negative, and P equals V0 times I will be less than zero. It delivers power. Okay? So, if you have a voltage source, you cannot say that it is going to definitely absorb power or deliver power. Depending on the configuration of the circuit, the current will be either going into the positive terminal or coming out of the uh, positive terminal. So, depending on these things, it can either absorb or deliver power. Okay? Now, we also know the IV characteristics of the voltage source. V equals V naught. This means that I, V, and this is the IV characteristic of a voltage source of value V0, and in this case I have assumed V0 to be positive. Okay? Now, uh, this, these axes divide the plane into four quadrants. Now, please tell me in which quadrant uh, the voltage source would absorb power and where it will deliver power. That is, the value of I can be anything, right? You can see that the characteristic of uh, the voltage source is in the first and fourth quadrants. So, if the, uh, my question is, uh, in which quadrant should the voltage source be operating in order to absorb power?
Again, there are some answers and they will really simple, okay? Because in this quadrant, in the first quadrant, V is more than 0 and I is more than 0. So obviously the product is positive, okay? In the first quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, V is more than 0 but I is negative. So obviously, P is IV which is less than 0. So this delivers power if it is operating here and this absorbs power. Okay. So if the voltage source is operating in the first quadrant, it absorbs power. If it is operating in the first quadrant, it delivers power. And what is meant by operating in this quadrant? In the circuit, the current value happens to be such that it is in the first quadrant. Okay. Similarly, when I say in the fourth quadrant, current value happens to be such that it is in the fourth quadrant. So, this is just another way of uh, putting whatever I said earlier. If I is less than 0, it will be in the fourth quadrant. Okay. Now, we can also take the case where this V0 happens to be negative. Okay. I will show this in red. If V0 is negative, then the characteristic of the voltage source would be over there. Now, in which quadrant would it be absorbing power and in which quadrant would it be delivering power? Again, there are a number of answers, but the principle is extremely simple. You look at uh, what the signs of V and I are, and from that you determine the sign of V times I. Okay. In the second quadrant, V is uh, smaller than 0, V is voltage is negative, and the current is greater than 0. So, this is the same as this one. Okay. As far as the IV product is concerned, so in the third quadrant also it delivers power. In the second quadrant, it uh, delivers power. And in the third quadrant, when V and Y are both negative, it absorbs power. Okay? So, this is the way it is. And uh, you may be asked, in, uh, uh, you may be asked, let's say you have a circuit with a uh, number of uh, sources and whether it is absorbing power or uh, dissipating power in a particular condition. You have to see whether this quadrant it is operating in. Okay. Finally, you just have to calculate the product of V and I with the appropriate signs and decide whether it is absorbing power or dissipating power. Okay. Now, in general, whether it is a voltage source or whatever element it is, in the IV plane, we know that I times V is positive in the first quadrant and I times V is positive in the third quadrant also. So, the element, if it is operating in the first quadrant or the third quadrant, it will be absorbing power. And if it is operating in the second quadrant or the fourth quadrant, I times V will be less than 0 and it will be delivering power. Okay? Uh, 
And there is a question from Sadiq. Please go ahead. Hello? Sadiq? Okay. Now, uh, with this we can uh, clearly see what happens with a resistor or a voltage source or a current source. Okay. First of all, if we had a resistor, what would be the characteristics? It's a straight line passing through the origin. Okay. So the straight line's the resistor's characteristic would be something like that. Okay. So you see that it is only going through regions which are absorbing power. Okay. So a resistor always absorbs power. Exactly the same conclusion we reach from the power being either V square by R or I square times R. Okay. Now if you have a voltage source. It's a positive voltage source with the chosen signs. It can be either here or if it's a negative voltage source, it will be over there. Okay, it will be one of these two. Now you can see that it's either, uh, it could be either absorbing power or delivering power. Okay. Now similarly, if you had a current source, a positive current source with the chosen signs would be here. And it can be either delivering power or absorbing power. You have to actually calculate the voltage across the current source to figure out what it is doing. Similarly, if I note is negative, if the current source has a negative value, then also it can be either delivering, it can be either delivering or absorbing power. Okay. So again, you have to calculate the uh, calculate the voltage across the current source to be able to tell whether it is absorbing power or delivering power. Okay. I think now it must be pretty clear, I did the voltage source in more detail, but it must be pretty clear that even the current source can be either absorbing power or delivering power. Okay. Any questions about this? Any quick confusion? Now, uh, there are some questions, maybe some confusion with the negative source. A negative source simply means that the voltage value is negative. That's all. That's all you have to do. Okay. So, just to uh, get some practice, let's uh, do a couple of problems which are very simple. Okay. What I will do is, I will connect, when I write plus minus like this and say 5 volts, it means that in this polarity it is 5 volts. Okay, that is the meaning of the symbol of the voltage source. And similarly, I write uh, 2 amperes like this. That means that 2 amperes is flowing from bottom to top. Okay. Now, uh, please uh, uh, answer this. Now, we have two sources in the circuit. One is a voltage source and one is a current source. Now, let's try this. I'll try a pole for the first time. You can answer with the pole. Please mark the choices once I announce the pole. Both are absorbing power. Or both delivering power, the voltage source is absorbing and the current source is delivering power or the current source is absorbing and the voltage source is delivering the power. Okay, so these are the choices. Let me try the poll uh, quickly.
Okay, if you'll be able to see the poll, please answer if it's A, B, C or D. I think those of you who are uh, sitting in front of uh, uh, computers, please try to answer the poll. And those of you who are in an institution uh, in front of a screen, maybe you can announce your uh, majority opinion to the mentor and then they can enter the poll. Okay? Please try that. We will have a feature of this Adobe Connect which uh, we can try and use. If it is useful, we will do it more often. Okay? And I think so many of you have seen quiz shows and lots of things with SMS voting, so you should be very comfortable with uh, this type of, uh, this mode of answering questions. I think you can uh, see the participants answers and in fact it is correct, the majority opinion says it is C, the voltage source is absorbing power and that is the correct answer, okay. And in this case the answer is uh, quite simple, the, uh, what we do, I mean always when you are not sure and especially in the beginning uh, when you are just studying things, just be systematic and calculate the, uh, calculate the power or anything else systematically, okay. Now for the voltage source. If I take V in this direction, passive convention says I has to be in that direction, okay. Clearly we see that V is plus 5 volts here by the way I have defined the voltage source and I is 2 amperes, okay. Clearly V times I is plus 10 and the product of voltage and current is gives you watts. Okay, this is something you would already be familiar with. And it's positive. Similarly, if I take the passive sign convention for the current, if I take V like this, that is 5 volts, this means that I have to take I in this direction and that is minus 2 amperes. 2 amperes is flowing from bottom to top, which also means it is flowing, uh, minus 2 amperes is flowing from top to bottom. So, V times I for this is uh, minus 10 watts. Okay. So, that means that the current source is delivering 10 watts of power which is going into the voltage source, okay. Now clearly uh, this choices A and B are a little absurd. I mean if you have a circuit with only two sources, it cannot be that both are absorbing power or both are delivering power, okay, because that violates basic uh, conservation of energy principles. If both are absorbing power, then you can ask where is it coming from. Similarly, if uh, everything is delivering power, you can ask where is this going, okay. So it's only two elements, it's uh, the only possibility is for one of them to be delivering power and for the other one to be absorbing power. In this case, the voltage source absorbs power, okay. Now just for a little more practice, I will uh, give you one more question. I'll make this 5 volts. That is, uh, what is the meaning of this is that it's the same as saying it is 5 volts in this direction, okay. I've written this uh, plus and minus inside the circle and say minus 5 volts. That really means it is 5 volts with bottom uh, as the plus sign and top as the minus sign, okay. Now I'll introduce just one more uh, complication, okay. And that is that I will connect a resistance here which is 1 ohm, okay. Now uh, first of all,
for the voltage source, please let me know whether it is absorbing or uh, delivering power. Okay. The question is, in this circuit, is the voltage source absorbing power or delivering power? Okay, I will broadcast the results now and the majority opinion uh, says that it is uh, the voltage source is delivering power and that is the correct answer. If you want, I will analyze it later and show you. Now, let's make things a little more uh, uh, complicated, okay. Now, my question to you is, we already decided that the voltage source is delivering power. And how much is it? Okay. So now we have decided that the voltage source is delivering power, but of course we are doing engineering. That means that we have to be able to quantitatively calculate things. So now please uh, mark how much power is it delivering. Okay, is it 5 watts or 10 watts or 7 watts or 3 watts? What is it? Sorry, the last choice is uh, 35 watts, not 3 watts. Okay. So it is delivering power, but how much is it? Is it 5 watts, 10 watts, 7 watts, 35 watts? Or something else? Have I miscalculated everything? Okay, I'll wait for a couple of more responses before I close. Now, uh, if you look at the results of the poll, maybe both B and D, that is 10 watts and 35 watts have uh, uh, got more or less the same number of watts. And I can see more watts for uh, 35 watts coming in. Of course, I mean, this is engineering, although this is fun. We don't decide things by what. There is only one correct answer here. And let's calculate what it is. It appears that many of you have said 10 watts because the answer to the previous question or there was some power of 10 watts in the previous question where we had only a voltage source and the current source. 
Remember, inductors they also have an additional component, the resistor. So there is no reason that the answer should be exactly the same as before. Okay, it could be coincidentally the same, but you have to calculate it nonetheless. Okay. Now, uh, first of all, uh, basically to figure out how much uh, power the voltage source is delivering, what we need to do is to find out the current through the voltage source. We already know the voltage across the voltage source, so all we need to do is to find the current through the voltage source. Okay. Now, this is a 1 ohm resistor and it is in parallel with the voltage source. So, obviously, the voltage across this is 5 volts in this direction or minus 5 volts with the opposite polarity. So, what does it mean? That means that the current in the resistor would be 5 volt divided by 1 ohm equals 5 amperes. Okay. Now, uh, you can clearly see that at this node, we have uh, 5 ampere through the resistor and 2 ampere through the current source and the remaining branch to satisfy KCL must have 5 ampere plus 2 amperes equals 7 amperes. Okay. Now, as far as the voltage source is concerned, the voltage with this polarity is minus 5 volts and the current with that polarity following passive sign convention is 7 amperes. Okay. So, V times I is 7 amperes times minus 5 volts which is minus 35 watts. This minus tells you that it is delivering power and this 35 watts is the amount of power that is delivered. So, the correct answer is B. Okay. Now, it is very easy to generate even more problems of this type. You can go on adding resistors and current sources and voltage sources and so on. Okay. And you can uh, get some practice yourself. Of course, if you go to a basic book like Hayden Kimmerly, there are a number of problems, but even you can generate these uh, problems yourselves. Okay. The only thing I would say is be very systematic and simply calculate V times I okay, based on the uh, Kirchhoff's current law, Kirchhoff's voltage law and so on. And for each element, do that properly and you will get the right answer. Okay. So, uh, in this itself, we can take as an additional exercise. Uh, amount of power delivered or absorbed. by the current source okay, or absorbed by the resistor okay, you can calculate these things for yourself and maybe discuss it on the forum or uh, whatever is convenient for you okay. now I hope it is very clear that a resistor always absorbs power a voltage, in, voltage source or a current source can absorb power or can uh, deliver power depending on the circuit they are connected in. Okay. Now, uh, let me ask you another question. I have a circuit with a single voltage source and a number of resistors. Okay. I have only one voltage source and a number of resistors. Now, uh, can the voltage source be uh, absorbing power? Is that possible? I am talking about a circuit with a single voltage source and number of resistors. Okay. We know in general the voltage source could be either absorbing or uh, delivering power. Now, in this case, uh, can the voltage source be absorbing power? If so, why? Or if not, why not? Clearly, I think all of you uh, guessed it correctly. 
if you have a single voltage source and all resistors, it can it has to deliver power. Okay. You cannot have all the elements in a circuit absorbing power. Then the question is where is the power coming from? Okay. So you have to have at least one source in the circuit which is delivering power. Now depending on the circuit, it could be more than one source, but uh, whatever circuit you have, you have the, at least one of the independent sources that you have must be delivering power. Okay. So that part is correct. Now uh, Having discussed uh, voltage sources, current sources, and uh, resistors, let's move on to what happens in inductors and capacitors. Okay. Okay. Again, we know the IV relationship for the capacitor. The capacitor current is C times dV by dt. Okay? And the instantaneous power V is V times I, which is V times C dV by dt. Okay? Now, <coughs> this itself uh, looks a little uh, uh, complicated and we can't tell whether it is absorbing uh, power at some instant or delivering power. Okay? Either is possible. Depending on uh, if uh, V and dV by dt are both positive, it's absorbing power. Similarly, if V and dV by dt are both negative, it is uh, absorbing power. Or if V and dV by dt have opposite signs, it is, uh, it is delivering power. Okay, so all of these things are possible. Now it is more uh, interesting to look at a slightly different quantity. Okay, let me rearrange this first. This is C times V times d by dt. Now from some now from basic calculus, you know that if you have if you try to differentiate uh, v square, what you will get is 2v times d by dt. Okay? Time derivative of v square is 2v times v dv by dt. And we have something like that over here. Okay? So we have uh, uh, v times dv by dt. Basically, so what we have is c times half of d by dt of v square. Okay? I'll say c by 2 d by dt of v square. Okay, so the instantaneous power that is going into a capacitor turns out to be directly proportional to the time derivative of V square. Okay, and this itself can be either positive or negative. Right? Now, uh, a related quantity to power is what is known as energy. Okay. And what is energy? Energy is nothing but the integral of power over time. Okay? So let's say you take a definite integral from T1 to T2 and you have some uh, element with V across it and I through it. We know that power itself is V times I. Okay? So the energy E that is absorbed by the element energy E absorbed by the element is given by the integral of Vi dt and when I put some limits here uh, T1 to T2, okay, this means that energy E absorbed by the element over a time from T1 to T2, okay, so that is what is meant here. So, energy E and uh, depending on how, how long you wait, different amounts of energy will be absorbed, okay, it's an integral quantity. So, 
you have to specify the time over which the energy is absorbed and that is equal to the integral of V times I dt. Okay. Now, uh, with this definition, we can look at what happens in a capacitor. Right? We saw that this power is C by 2 divided dt of V square. Let me write the capacitor again, Vi, and this is the capacitor C, and the power, which is V times I, can be written as C times V times dV by dt, which is C by 2 time derivative of V square. Okay? Now, let me uh, integrate this, okay, and I'll also choose T1 to be 0 and I will assume that the capacitor has 0 volts across it. Okay, this is just the starting point. I start from a capacitor that has 0 volts and then V and I are varied in some way. Okay, they are related by I equals C dV by dt. Maybe I are very V or I lie very I, it doesn't matter, but they vary in some way. Okay. And finally, I reach a certain time, T2. Okay? So, the energy absorbed by the capacitor from T1 to T2 is nothing but integral of C by 2 d by dt v square dt from t1 to t2. Okay? And let's say that at time t2 capacitor has certain vc volts across it. Okay? Now, uh, you can see that this uh, time derivative operator and the uh, integral cancel each other and you will be left with C by 2 times V square with the value of voltage at T1 to value of voltage at T2. Okay? And this is given by C by 2 Vc square. So what this means is that a capacitor, if you charge it up to a voltage Vc, will have energy. It has absorbed all this energy, right? So it will have an energy C by 2 times Vc square across it. Okay? And also, just like the power in a resistor was always positive, the energy in the capacitor is always positive. Vc itself could be either positive or negative, but the capacitor would have stored some energy. Okay? Is this clear? Uh, any questions about uh, this part of it? What I did was try to find out what the power uh, dissipated in a capacitor was and it comes out as uh, some, uh, not power dissipated, power uh, uh, absorbed by the capacitor as and it comes out as some uh, derivative of something. Now energy which is the integral of the power comes out to be half C V C square. Okay, half of capacitance times the square of the voltage and that is always positive. So if you charge a capacitor from uh, its discharge state from 0 volts to a voltage VC, it would have uh, absorbed an energy or it stores an energy of half C VC square. Okay? Any questions about this? How we derived it or any uh, sticky points?
So now I also started from uh, T1 equal to 0, the capacitor has 0 volts across it and uh, nothing is stored in it. Okay, no charge, no fields, no energy. And I took it all the way to uh, voltage Vc and it has an energy C by 2 Vc square stored across it. Okay, so from this we can say that, uh, now uh, the important thing is I didn't worry about how exactly the voltage changed. Okay, it went from 0 to Vc in whatever manner. But finally, the energy stored in the capacitor is half CV square. Okay, so the energy in the capacitor is not dependent on how you reach that voltage, but it's dependent only on the voltage across the capacitor. Okay. Okay. Now it doesn't matter. What is meant is, let's say I plot the voltage across the capacitor V as a function of time T. And let's say this is the voltage Vc, okay. Now I could have reached it as a straight line. I could have reached it in some uh, strange way like this, okay. Uh, or I could do even wilder stuff and go there. So as long as initially it is at zero, so that means its energy, everything is zero. And finally I reach a voltage of Vc. So that means that once I reach here, I would have uh, totally absorbed an energy of uh, half CVC square and that is stored in the capacitor, okay? Now there is a question on uh, what happens when you discharge a capacitor, okay. So let's say uh, again, so I call this time as T1 and I call this T2 where it is at Vc and let's say uh, it goes to 0 from here, okay. And I will show some arbitrary waveform, it will go to 0 at a time T3, okay. So now if you look at what is happening during this time, integral from T2 to T3, C by 2, uh, integral of those whole thing, okay. This is the energy absorbed by the capacitor during this time, okay. Now what do we get? Again, the integral and the time derivative uh, cancel each other and we will end up with C by 2, V square with the voltage at T2 and the voltage at T3, okay. Now what is this going to be? This will be C by 2 and voltage at T3 is 0 because it reached 0 volts minus voltage at T2 is Vc, okay. So we get minus half Cvc squared, okay. What it meant is, it is negative, so that means that the capacitor gave out energy, okay. So if it is positive, the capacitor absorbed energy, and if it is uh, negative, uh, the capacitor delivered energy, okay. So if you charge the capacitor to Vc, it would have stored an energy of half uh, Cv squared, and then now if you discharge it back to zero, it gives back that energy, okay. So a capacitor does not dissipate energy, uh, whereas in a resistor, the energy you put into it, you cannot get it back, whereas a capacitor, you 
uh, charge it to some voltage, it draws some energy from the source. Okay, and then you discharge it back to zero, it gives back all the energy to the source. Okay, so a capacitor does not dissipate any energy, but it can store energy. I hope that is clear. So that means that the energy stored in a capacitor can be recovered. Okay, you can use that and it's one of the important uses of a capacitor. You store energy in it and then uh, uh, you can also get the stored energy. Okay. Now let's take the example of an inductor. It's very similar to that of the capacitor. V and I. Okay. Now uh, we know that the voltage is proportional to the time derivative of the current. So the power is V times I which is L times I times dI by dt and this itself can be either positive or negative and we use the usual algebraic trick to write this as L by 2 d by dt of I square. Okay? And again this itself is not an interesting quantity as the energy energy absorbed by the inductor equals and for a duration T1 to T2 equals the integral from T1 to T2 of L by 2 d by dt of y square with respect to time. So again this will be half L and i square this will be the value of i at t1 and the value of i at t2. Okay. So if you start from uh, an inductor that is that has zero current in it and go to a current i l, okay. current of I L at T2, okay, the energy absorbed would be half L I square from 0 to I L, which basically gives you half L I L square, okay. Now, uh, This means that an inductor stores an energy of uh, half L I L square. That is half of inductance times the square of the current through the inductor. And just by uh, similar uh, logic uh, that we employed earlier, okay, uh, we can show that by discharging from uh, some current I L to zero current, you can recover all of the energy. Okay, So the inductor also does not uh, dissipate any energy and it stores an energy of half L I L square. It also doesn't depend on how you reach I L. You could reach it uh, gradually, you could reach it abruptly and you could uh, go back and forth between positive and negative values and reach that. Okay, So as long as you are at a current of I L, you will have an energy stored which is half of L I L square in the inductor. Okay. 
Any questions about this? Okay, there is uh, one question. It says, uh, basically it asks, what is the difference between an inductor and a capacitor? Now, I mean, the I and V relationships are different. Okay, for a capacitor, you have a voltage V across it, and a current I through it. I is C times dV by dt. And in an inductor, if you have a voltage across it, and a current through it, I is L di by dt. Okay? So as far as circuits, as far as the terminal characteristics are concerned, it's like the roles of current and voltage have reversed. Okay? In a capacitor, the current is the time derivative of voltage and in an inductor, the, sorry, I made a mistake here, this should be V, the voltage is the time derivative of current. Okay? So that's all that is there. Good. And physically, of course, there is a difference. A capacitor stores energy in the form of uh, electric fields and an inductor stores energy in the form of magnetic fields. Okay? In other words, uh, another way of saying it is a capacitor stores voltage and an inductor stores uh, flux linkage. Okay? Uh, inductor stores current. Inductor stores a current. Now, there is another interesting uh, question, which is uh, that if a capacitor behaves as, uh, if a capacitor can absorb power and also deliver power, is it an active element or a passive element? Okay? So this was the question. Okay. Now again, I would uh, probably turn this back on the participants and ask, what do you think it is? Is a capacitor an active element or a passive element? And of course, exactly the same question can apply to an inductor. Now, it is true that a capacitor can uh, deliver power, but deliver energy. But the point is that you still consider it a passive element. It can only deliver the energy, energy which is stored in it. Okay. So if you start from a capacitor that is discharged, now it cannot deliver any energy. It can absorb some energy and then uh, give it back. Okay. In fact, that's a very useful mode of operation for a capacitor or an inductor. You can use that to store energy. Sometimes what happens is uh, there are uh, many cases in which uh, circuit needs a lot of energy at some particular instance. So what you do is you arrange the circuit such that the capacitor is uh, charged up and it stores energy and during those instants of uh, very high energy demand, it can give out energy. Okay, But we still consider it a passive element because you first have to supply energy to it and then take it out. Okay, I hope that is clear. Okay, now uh, before we go further, uh, let's be uh, clear about a few things.
resistor B I, the power is uh, I square R or B square by R always dissipates power, okay, and a capacitor and inductor. The energy is half CV square in a capacitor. Instantaneous voltage square divided by R over instantaneous current square times R. Now the instantaneous energy stored in a capacitor is the voltage at that instant square times half C. Similarly, the instantaneous energy stored in an inductor is the instantaneous current I times half L. Okay. And we also said that the voltage and current source can either absorb or deliver power. Okay. So the power is V times I and you can also find out the energy, you can integrate the power over some time to see how much energy has been delivered by the uh, voltage source or the current source over a given period, okay. Now uh, we know that the voltage V is measured in volts uh, with the symbol positive V and the current I is measured in amperes. The symbol is uppercase or capital A. Okay. Now the power, which is V times I, which is volts times ampere, is measured in is uh, denoted by units of watts. Is measured in units of watts, denoted by W. Okay. So one watt equals one ampere times one volt. It also equals one ampere square times 1 ohm uh, from this formula. This is just so that you get used to uh, different ways of arriving at the units of watts and it is also equal to 1 volt square divided by 1 ohm. Okay. And the energy E is measured in joules denoted by J. Okay. Now we know that the energy is the time integral of power. So 1 joule equals 1 watt per second. Okay. So I think these are mostly you are familiar with these things, but I am uh, just refreshing your memory. Okay. And also we know that clearly the dimensions have to be consistent. So half C V square is the energy in a capacitor. So, if you multiply parents with uh, volt square, you will get units of joules. Similarly, half L I L square is the energy stored in an inductor. And if you multiply Henry's, the units for inductor with ampere square, you get joules again. Okay. So whenever uh, you do any calculations, please, please do it complete with units, okay. There is not much point giving answers like uh, the current is 1, right. It doesn't make any sense. It has some units, so it has current of 1 amp or 1 milliamp and so on, okay. Similarly, the energy could be a joule or a picojoule or a nanojoule or whatever it is. Everything has to be specified with, uh, uh, every uh, everything has to be specified. Uh, with proper units. Uh, it appears that I made a mistake here. The power is the rate of change of energy. So 1 watt is 1 joule per 1 second or 1 joule is 1 watt times 1 second. Okay. This means that if you deliver 1 joule of energy in 1 second, the average power is 1 watt. Alternatively, 
let's say you have a resistor and it is dissipating one watt, and if you wait for one second, it would have dissipated one joule of energy. Okay. Okay. Now again, uh, we can uh, do a couple of uh, calculations just to get you used to these calculations. Let's say I have one milliamp current source. I think all of you know the uh, prefixes. Milli is 10 to the minus 3. And micro is 10 to the minus 6. Nano is 10 to the minus 9. And pico is 10 to the minus 12. These are the ones that we most frequently use. Okay. Go ahead. 1 milliamp and a 2 kilo ohm resistor connected across it. Okay. Now the question is what is the power dissipated in the resistor? How much power is dissipated in the resistor? Please answer this. How much power is dissipated in the resistor? So now uh, the current here, I is 1 milliamp and the power dissipated is nothing but I square times R which is 2 times 10 to the minus 3, this is 2 milliamp, right, square times, sorry, 1 milliamp, not 2 milliamps, 1 milliamp times R which is 2 kilo ohms and kilo is nothing but, by the way, the other uh, subscripts uh, so the uh, prefix is more than uh, unity are uh, kilo of 10 to the 3 and mega of uh, 10 to the 6, okay, and giga of 10 to the 9. So this will give you two times 10 to the 3 ohms. The entire result will come out to be two times 10 to the minus 3 watts or 2 milliwatts. Okay? So the power dissipated is 2 milliwatts. Some of you have said it is 2 watts, but uh, please mind these uh, units properly. Okay? Now, next is, let's say, I have a 5 volt voltage source across a 10 nanofarad capacitor, okay. How much energy is stored in the capacitor? How much is that? Please calculate. And similarly, you can also calculate If 1 milliamp is flowing through a 100 milli Henry inductor, how much energy is stored in the inductor?
Okay, I think by and large you have got this, uh, it's just simple arithmetic. Here it is half and 10 nanofarads, which is 10 times 10 to the minus 9 farads times v square, which is 5 square, which gives you, this is 25. 25 times 10 is 250 divided by 2 is 125. 125 times 10 to the minus 9 joules or 125 nano. Okay. Now in this case, the inductor uh, energy is half L i square. The current is 1 milliampere, that is 10 to the minus 3 amperes times, sorry, uh, the inductor is 100 millihenries, which is 100 times 10 to the minus 3 henries times 1 milliampere, which is 10 to the minus 3 square. Okay. And this gives you 50 times 10 to the minus 9 joules or 50 nano joules. Okay? So, you should be able to uh, do any of these calculations by yourselves from uh, here onwards. Okay? Uh, any elements or uh, any simple circuit you should be able to calculate the voltage and current in each element and then calculate how much power or energy is dissipated or uh, delivered in each element. Okay. Any questions about anything we have done so far? So what we have learned in this energy is the definition of uh, power and energy in uh, electrical elements. Uh, an inductor and capacitor store uh, positive energy and they can also be recovered. They don't really dissipate or lose any energy. So that's an important feature that distinguishes them from resistors which constantly lose energy. Okay, They all continuously dissipate power as long as some current is flowing through them. And the voltage source and current source are the sources of energy, but it is possible for them to also dissipate uh, energy or power. Okay. So if there are no further questions, what we will do is we will uh, stop here and continue with the next lecture where we will discuss another element which is known as the mutual inductor and then move on to circuit analysis. Okay. Any questions? Okay, then I'll see you in the next lecture.